this is Whitney for Weddings Done Well, and today we are going to talk about how to set your wedding date. Now this video is designed to correspond with one of the planning checklists on my website. So if you don't have it already, please head over to weddingsdonewell.com and there you will find a plethora of free planning checklists and you're gonna wanna go to the one that says 18 months plus. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Here's what we'll discuss. What is your main priority? When to visit potential venues and what to think about. Peak season versus off peak season. Why Saturdays are most popular. Pros and cons of Fridays and Sundays. Three day weekend weddings. And weddings on a holiday. Good idea or bad idea? So, when we discuss wedding dates, I tend to find that there are two different kinds of couples. The first kind of couple already has a date in mind. So the venue that they select is going to have to be available on that date. And then the other kind of couple says, we don't really have a date in mind. So once we find our perfect venue, that'll help us set our date. If you're the first couple and you have a specific date, whether it be because it's the date of your anniversary or the date that you two met, maybe it's an important date in your family, maybe you've done numerology and you've decided that that's the right date for you two to start your married life. Maybe the bride knows what day she's gonna get her period and she's kind of deciding on um, her wedding date based on working around that. Whatever the case may be for you two, if you know that you have a date, then take that into consideration as you begin your search for venues. If you call venues to make appointments, start off by asking if they have that date open because if they don't, it's kind of a non-starter. If you're the kind of couple that doesn't have a date in mind, then go ahead and make appointments to tour as many venues as you possibly can. You're only gonna do this once, and wedding ten venues tend to be the most beautiful places, so tour them all. You might be really surprised to find out that the venue you fall in love with is not the one that you thought you would at the very beginning of the process. Something else to think about is, let's say you don't have a specific date in mind, but you do know what kind of season you like, maybe try and tour the venue in that season. So if you know that you're getting married at a vineyard, let's say, and that the grapes tend to, or the vines tend to bloom in the springtime, visit it in the spring or the summer. But if the, the, the vines tend to wilt or just completely diminish in the fall and the winter seasons, don't really visit it then because you're not really gonna get the full sense and you might walk in and say, oh, this place is ugly when really it's not, it's actually beautiful in the springtime, you're just there at the wrong time. If that can't be avoided because you have less than a, a year to plan, then see what you can see either on Instagram, on their Facebook, on their website. If you go there in person, see if they have any albums that you can flip through and see what weddings look like in the season that you're considering. Here are two terms that you're going to need to know, peak season and off peak season. So every venue has a peak season and a non-peak season and they usually have prices that correspond. Peak season is going to vary depending on what region of the world you're in, but typically the peak season is gonna be the more popular time. So it's usually when the venue is the most um, like in bloom, if it's an outdoor venue, or just like the high time, the time that they're gonna expect the largest number of guests to come visit. And so if you decide that you wanna get married during peak season at your venue, you can probably expect to pay more than you would during off season or off peak season. So um, what are you gonna think about when it comes time to picking your date? Well, most people want a Saturday wedding and the reason that they do is because that's when people are off. Like they're off during the day so they have that time to get ready for your wedding and then they come to your wedding typically in the late afternoon, early evening and then they can party as late as they want to because the next day is Sunday and they probably don't have to go back to work. Because Saturday is so popular, venues tend to charge the most for a Saturday wedding. If you're willing to um, do something other than a Saturday in order to save some money, there are definitely pros and cons to Friday and Sunday weddings, so let's talk about those. With a Friday wedding, you're probably gonna save money at your venue. They're probably gonna charge less for a Friday wedding than they do with a Saturday rental. If you get married on a Friday, what that's going to entail is that your guests, if they're local, will probably need to take a half day off work 
or maybe even a full day. So there is the inconvenience factor to them. But once they come to your wedding, chances are it's the start of their weekend. They probably don't work on Saturday. So once they get there, they're gonna be able to let loose, relax, have a great time, and party to the night away because they don't have anything going on the following day. So there's definitely a perk there. If you have a Friday wedding, then you're probably gonna have a rehearsal dinner on Thursday. The people that would attend your rehearsal dinner would be your family, your wedding party, and then maybe anyone that's coming in from out of town. So if you're asking people to attend a Thursday rehearsal dinner, again, they might have to take either a full day or a half day off work. So there's the double inconvenience there. But something else to think about, if they're coming in for your wedding and they're gonna be making hotel arrangements, if they make hotel arrangements for Thursday night, they're probably gonna spend less for a Thursday night at a hotel than a Friday night at a hotel. So there is that, there's the cost savings to them. Another thing to think about is that while, as I just mentioned, your venue is gonna charge less, likely gonna charge less on a Friday, um, your vendors probably will too. Oftentimes, everyone's really busy on Saturday. That's a popular day, but people are less busy on a Friday. So you might be able to get good deals or you might be able to negotiate more, not only with your venue, but also with your vendors for a Friday wedding. So that's something else to think about for a Friday. So here's the deal with a Sunday wedding. Chances are with a Sunday wedding, people are already off work, so they're not having to take any time off. But when it comes to a Sunday wedding, you're probably gonna need to start earlier because chances are they do go back to work on Monday. So if you wanted to have, let's say, a four o'clock, five o'clock wedding ceremony, um, that's probably not a good idea because in my experience, I, said, I tend to see people leave Sunday weddings starting around eight or 9 p.m. and usually the place is cleared out by 10. So if you're planning to start at five with the intention of going until like midnight, one in the morning, I would not count on that for a Sunday wedding wedding and if that's a deal breaker for you stick to a Friday or a Saturday but again Sundays tend to be less popular at venues and less popular with vendors so you're probably going to save a good amount of money if you're willing to do a Sunday wedding also if you do a Sunday wedding your rehearsal dinner is probably on Saturday and again guests are probably already off so they won't be required to take any time off work in order to attend your Saturday rehearsal dinner. So um, a downside potentially would be that you'd have a harder time finding a restaurant that's available on a Saturday night for a rehearsal dinner, because that also tends to be peak time at every restaurant. But assuming you can make an advanced reservation and that that isn't a problem, then a perk for a Sunday wedding would definitely be a Saturday rehearsal dinner. And another thing to think about is it doesn't have to be a dinner. You could do a Saturday morning brunch or something like that. One other thought that I will leave you with is that if you're getting married on a Sunday, but it's a three-day weekend, you're probably not gonna save anything because those are actually one of the most popular weekends, those three-day weekends. So it almost is like Sunday becomes Saturday because guests don't have work the following day, so they can stay late and they can party real late. And chances are, if your guests are coming in from out of town, they're actually probably gonna book the whole three days to be there for your wedding. And that's just great. You know, that's great for you, it's great for them. But the venues know that. It makes it extremely popular of a time to get married, so then they are gonna charge your premium. So don't look at a Sunday wedding connected to a three-day weekend as a cost-saving opportunity, because it definitely is not. The last thing to think through as you're trying to determine your wedding date is whether or not you should get married on a holiday. So holidays like New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, maybe even Halloween, I've done weddings on all three of those holidays and they've been a lot of fun. So I'll give you two tips if you've decided that you'd like to use a holiday as part of your wedding date. Um, first of all, acknowledge the holiday and definitely roll with it. So don't have a Halloween wedding and try not to acknowledge that it's Halloween, like just pretend that it isn't, cause that would be weird. If you're having a holiday wedding, go with it. And that doesn't mean go over the top and like make it gimmicky or cheesy, but like I did a Halloween wedding once where the band was dressed up in these really cool, like sophisticated, but cool Halloween costumes. And um, the wedding was kind of dark, like their color scheme was kind of like dark and dramatic and moody. And I think that kind of was the couple, which is why they were more inclined to have a Halloween wedding in the first place. So there was definitely like an air of Halloween throughout the day, it carried, and I thought it was really cool. And I think the guests were totally willing to play along and celebrate that holiday with them. 
since the couple made an effort to make it fun. And then also, if you're getting married on a holiday that's more like romantic, you know, like New Year's Eve or like Valentine's Day, definitely find a way to include the couples in the romance of it. So it's their Valentine's Day and they'd probably be spending it together and doing something special. So if they're gonna spend it with you, make sure they still get to do something special. If it's a Valentine's Day wedding, maybe pass out roses or pass out chocolates or make it a really cute photo booth or something like that. And if it's a New Year's Eve wedding, make sure that when the ball drops, you do something really special to celebrate. So maybe like a big confetti blast or something like that. It could also be an epic photo opportunity to invite all the guests onto the dance floor and then kiss at midnight and then have your photographer like way up above and get this really cool aerial shot of everyone kissing at midnight. So there are definitely some pros to getting married on those holidays. And I will say they're not necessarily the most popular time to get married. So surprisingly, maybe surprisingly, you could potentially get a really good deal on a venue on one of those holidays. So if you're willing to roll with it, I think it could be great. There you have it, some things to think about when trying to decide on your wedding date. I hope there were some helpful tips in there for you. Make sure you don't miss a beat in all the planning fun by subscribing to my channel and make sure that you comment below if you have any questions for me. I am so happy to create a special video just for you if you have a specific question of mine. So put it down below in the comments and I promise I will find it and shoot a video for you. In the meantime, thanks again for watching and happy planning.